Hey guys, Oni here with episode 19 of our Die Tech Factorio Let's Play, Season 3. Alright. So, last time, we were able to successfully destroy that biter base down to the uh, southwest here. And from that, we got about 30 or so of those alien artifacts, which is why we are now able to research Military 4. Which is good, because that paves the way for Military 5, 6, 7, and 8. And none of those require purple science packs. They only require blue as the highest tier science pack. So... From this, I'll be able to eventually get the laser shotgun, the laser tanks, and all the uh, more advanced laser turrets. So I'm pretty excited for that. But it does require that I get the gemstone processing going so I can actually, you know, build the better turrets. But one of the drawbacks, or one of the uh, caveats here, is that um, the crystal formation mining drill requires bronze alloy, which requires that I start getting the metallurgic ore smelting, which requires that I start getting lava handling. So it's a lot of... Um, a lot of pre prerequisites to get the uh, bronze alloys to be able to actually use the crystal formation mining drill. But, because we're pretty far from that right now, I want to go ahead and start making things like the processing units this episode, or at least start it this episode. So, I'm thinking that I probably want to have, just for my own sake, because I want it, you know, I don't. There's no real, there's no real reason behind wanting this many, but to start out with, I want to have about 20 or so processing units being made per minute. And I'm thinking that I want to have a lot of room to set this up, which is actually uh, not going to be that hard now because I do have all this extra room down here now, somewhat. I mean, there is a biter base right down here that's going to give me problems if I expand, but I do have the room to build a larger wall here now. So I, let me just go ahead and take, um, how far do you guys go? Not that far. So because I want the robots to do it, I'm going to go ahead and make another robo port which I don't have enough steel or iron for right now. So let's go ahead and grab some of those materials. Let's grab some more steel and iron. I also want to set up a production area for things that I'm going to be making and just storing for my logistics network so that I have them to be able to be delivered to me. Things like, you know, the um, iron gear wheels, which I have over here, which I did last time. So I should be able to just request those now. Totally forgot about that. So give me intermediates, iron gear wheels, 100. And somebody somewhere, there we go, right over here, should be running over here to give them to me. And do I have anything else going into the system? I do have ammo and electronic circuits. And that's about it as far as things that I need pretty often. I do have those... Um, transport belts, which I, sh I should probably request as well. Let me request those belts, because I do use those a lot. Keep about 75 on me at all times, which I already have, like, over 100, so they're not gonna waste their time trying to give me some right now, because I already have enough. Alright. Let's make another one of these robo-ports. Which should actually kick off the robots to give me some more iron gear, gear wheels, which they are doing right now. And I think the first couple things that I'm gonna make with those processing units, once I get them going... It's gonna be the or they're gonna be the um, more advanced robots because, like I said before, the Mark One robots from Ditech are by default a lot faster than the re regular ones, and I also believe that they uh, benefit from any upgrades you get from for the uh, robots. So any speed upgrades you get for these guys also apply to these guys. All right, so I have that extra port now. Let's put it down. Um, let's put it in this area here so we can have the construction zone be expanded. Um. See, because I'm going to be able to expand anyway, I'm going to need to move these guys anyway, so... Get rid of some of these turrets here to make room. Put down this robo-port. And now I can build in this area here. First thing I'm going to do is clear out these trees. Which, they're going to get pretty close to that base down here. There's a spitter right there. But this should be fine. Let me go ahead and just... Do that. See how well they do with that. Ah, shit. Right when I did that, there's a wave coming. Oh god. I have to distract him. No! Attack me! Attack me! Ooh, look, these, these guys take a lot of damage from those guns. Wow. What is this, silver ore? And I got some gems right here. Wait, no, never mind, that's zinc. I think I have gems right here. If I break down this tree here without angering these uh, biters, you'll see that I have... Come on. I have crystal formations here. But crystal formations by themselves, I mean, as you can see, they're not very rich. Only about 99 in there. And with that, 
you don't always get a good gem out of the, um, when you mine it anyway. Sometimes you get like duds or, you know, crappy gems, which won't be able, they'll basically just be waste. You know, you'll get like, out of every X amount of gems, a couple of them will be crappy and you won't be able to do anything with them. They'll just take up space in your inventory. I'm not sure if you can actually make those, I think you might be able to turn the crappy gems you get into stone, but I can't remember off the top of my head. So we'll find out. Alright. And I think once these guys are done here, yeah, this guy's trying to repair this guy. So they should repair each other over time. As long as they don't get attacked again and get destroyed. So, with that, we can go ahead and start putting our walls down with the shadow build or the ghost build. So I'm thinking that I want to go down to about half of this or to that, like, I mean, right about here. So, whoops, can't do that because I can't build a straight line in Factorio to save my life. Slowly. Whoops. Carefully. Build down some more. Well, can you reach that? You can reach that. Sweet. Plenty of extra room. Whoops. Come on. I swear I can do this. And can you reach that? Yep, you can reach that. Oops. Come on. Come on. It's like building a straight line is the most difficult thing in Factorio. Cancel all these stupid ones and these ones right here. I'll leave that one in the corner. And then build up. Whoops. Set up, not diagonal. Up. Come on. Come on. All right. You know what? You know what this needs? A shift hold button a function where you shift it and hold you shift you hold down shift and hold down the uh, mouse button and then drag it and it makes a line. That'd be great. All right, so probably get rid of. Well, I'm gonna make it double layered anyway, but I'm gonna make it double layered on the outside, not on the inside. So get rid of those guys. I'll leave these guys here. That's already on the outside. Get rid of you, even though I said I'd keep you. Uh, anybody? Anybody else? Yeah, get rid of you guys here. Whoops, broke the wall. And right click, right click, right click, right click. Get rid of those guys, and then you can also get rid of this entire chunk of wall here. Of course, they're pretty slow, so they'll take a while to do this. Uh, why is there no wall here? Oh, there is. Oh, there we go. And then I could probably do it myself. Nah. I was going to say, I can build the uh, outer wall myself, but they can do it. So let me actually probably, I should probably, oops, got a spitter coming in the base. Right there. Come on. Boom. All right. First thing I should probably do is set up some defenses out here. So, and I've been using small poles the whole time. Like in my old playthroughs, I always used the big poles, the medium and the large ones. I'm not sure what happened this time where I sort of, you know, lean towards using just only these small poles. But let's try to use the bigger ones. Let's see, medium. Because I do have a larger area, duh. So, set up some power spots. And of course, eventually, once I expand even more, I'll be using this area for actual for the actual iron. But for right now, I'm using it just for the uh, the space. Uh, right there. Whoops. Now, I will actually, I mean, technically, I'll, I'll be recycling the turrets, but if, when I first build them, in a couple seconds here, it'll look like I'm actually leaving the old turrets behind, but putting new turrets down here, which will make it look like I'm not reusing the same turrets, but what's going to happen is I'll, I'll tell them to, ooh, look at that big wave. I'll tell them to ghost build all the turrets, and then after they're done, I'll deconstruct all the turrets that are redundant, and then they'll put it back in the network to be reused later. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be wasting materials here. Got all our power set up. Set up our turrets. Now, you guys can reach all this, right? Yep. And how many turrets do I have in the network right now? Should be about a... Ooh, none? That's oh, probably because I don't have the turrets going into a passive provider chest or a storage chest. Let me break this wall and break this wall. I have my turrets going into a... 
regular steel chest. So if I just change this over to a um, passive provider chest or even a storage chest, they should have access to this. There we go. Oop, want to give me a circuit? Thank you very much. And then we can go ahead and do this. Um, sort of double layered at first. I'll probably run out of turrets to use. What's wrong? Missing bots? Yeah, because they're all busy down here. Stop complaining. Wait your turn. Jeez, the nerve. I should probably just do a, a freaking blueprint for this, shouldn't I? If I know the distance it's going to be, then I know how big it's going to be. Why don't I just do a blueprint? Let's do a blueprint. And let's just do it uh, like this, which I could probably do it even better. I could probably just do the whole power pole setup, but I already have the power poles set up, so I'm not going to worry about that. Here, here. There we go. It's a lot faster now. And then, of course, that'll fit. Yeah, that'll fit. Sweet. Whoops. Is that a power pole there? Yes, it is. Whoops. Can I... I can't do that. I can't cancel an entire blueprint by right-clicking on it. Okay. So, of course, you're missing all these objects, but that can be fixed by just deconstructing a bunch that are over here or in the areas that have already been set up with new turrets. I don't want to deconstruct the ones over here because these ones haven't been built yet, so I'd be kind of defenseless over here. Okay, come over here and deconstruct these guys. So sure that I can give them more turrets to use. Anybody else need to be deconstructed? I don't think so. These guys right here could probably, probably go. But, probably just do these by hand. There we go. Dump these in the chest over here. They have access to them. And of course, I think, am I getting attacked over here? Kind of. They don't, they don't really build them in the same order that you put them down. They kind of build them uh, willy-nilly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now they're being attacked and there's not enough to defend us. Uh, is that going to work? Come on. Jeez. Get rid of all these. I wonder if they can take them up. They don't. I was going to say, I wonder if they can take them and then immediately realize that, hey, this goes somewhere else. Let me just take it over there, but I guess they can't do that. I know I said this episode is going to be about um, building the, the processing units. Just got to readjust my chair real quick. But, uh, of course, you got to have room for it. So, yeah. Let's see. Probably still not enough turrets to do this yet. I'll let them just work and see what happens. All right. So, I already plugged in the value of 20 units per minute for processing units into this factor ratio tool, and it looks like I have a lot of building to do. Especially when it comes to things like uh, electronic circuits, because I'm going to need a lot of those guys. Let's see. However, like I said before, it tends to try to use, unless you sell it otherwise, it tends to try to use the cheapest way for certain things. Like, right now it's telling me that I need 15.24 assembly machine level one to make uh, the necessary amount of electronic circuits but if I mean I, I could use level two ones because those are a little bit faster like why not like why am I forced to use level one so if I take those and I say level two with uh, fast inserters and burner inserters for both input and output yeah same amount the actual limiting factor here is the fast inserter for the input 
because it, it, it doesn't know or it doesn't calculate it out as if you were able to put two inserters on the same machine. Which is what I would do in this situation when I need so much of so much of a single item. I would put two inserters on the same machine to help boost the input levels. But it's it calculates it out as if you only had one inserter doing all the input. So Yeah, might need to adjust that a little bit. So you guys done down here? No, you're not. Not even close. You need 80 more turrets. Alright, military four is done. Sweet. We can now get the shotgun, piercing shotgun shells. And the highly advanced grenade, but what I'm more concerned, what I'm more focused on is getting things like the next level of military, or, like I said before, I need to get the lava handling going so I can get my, get on the way towards uh, smelting up some bronze so I can actually make that crystal mining drill. Okay. So give me one second while I change these, uh, while I f uh, figure out the ratios I need for the number of processing units I want to have. Be right back. Alright guys, so it looks like if I use multiple inserters for each one, well basically the thing is, here's the, uh, here's the scoop. In order to make 20 processing units per minute, which is, might be a little bit too much for right now, but hey, go big or go home, right? Um, I will need 480 electronic circuits per minute, by itself. For that one little, for just 20 blue circuits per minute, I need 480 green ones per minute. Which means, uh, if I only had one inserter going into one assembly machine, I would need 16 or so assembly machines to accommodate that. But if I have two fast inserters doing the input, then the slowdown that comes from the inserter gets cut in half, and it turns out that I only need about eight uh, assemblers to do that um, level of production for the electronic circuits. So, let's see. Now we can probably get rid of this guy right here. All this stuff. Actually, you know what? No, I, I want this. I want you to have this. I want this for myself. Alright. Still waiting on some... Uh, oh, some guys don't have power. Oh, I didn't put them in the right spot. Uh, my bad. And some of you might be wondering, well, how the hell am I going to get all the materials from way up here to way down here? Well, I'm just going to use the buses that I already have set up. And I know that um, some of you guys have been talking about how um, the, 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 the amount of the, the level that my base is in terms of how cramped it is, is, is getting kind of out of control, which is why I'm trying to expand out and spread things out a little bit more. Trust me, I know. Like, I'm, not, I'm actually the one playing, so I, I know how cramped it is. Like, <laughs> believe me, it's, it's, it's not any better for me than it is for you. Um, so, yeah. I, I definitely need to focus on spreading out my base a little bit more. I mean, I, I kind of got screwed in terms of how close I can get to these biter bases from when I first spawned. So. But yes, don't worry. I, I am definitely going to focus on spreading out more as time goes on. Uh, it's partially why I decided to try to attack that base down here because I didn't want to have to try to squeeze in a, a production line for blue circuits in a little area over here, over here. All right, and I can also get rid of all these walls here. Oops, not that. Get rid of all these walls here. There we go. Oops, not that, but I can fix that. Don't do that. How do I... How do I undo? There we go. Okay. So. I need a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So, um... The biggest sort of thing I'm worried about is my levels of plastic production for this. Because I only have two guys making plastic. And even though it looks like my plastic is okay right now, I'm gonna, gonna be using a lot of it. And speaking of a lot of it, I noticed that I'm actually out. I need to start. I need to automate. A, I need to automate a lot of things here, guys. Believe me, I know. Like, my rubber, that's not automated here yet. I need to automate that. Uh, I know. Believe me, I know. But one thing at a time, one thing at a time. So, we, oops, hit the, hit the microphone there again. Didn't mean to do that. Really close to my face and trying to turn my head to look at this other screen so I can look at the ratios. It's kind of, without hitting my headset on the microphone, it's kind of like a challenge sometimes. Um, let's see, advanced circuits. I need a lot of those. Uh... If I change this to a fast inserter, nope, doesn't make a difference. Alright, so we're gonna need a lot of stuff. 
Let's start with the basics. Copper cables, which I need a lot. Holy crap, I need 25. It says, it says I need 25.4 machines. Holy crap. Yeah, I need 25.4, which is probably less than that. I probably need about half of that because I'm going to be using... The limiting factor on this is the level of output. So I'll explain that in one second. Give me one second while I tweak these numbers one more time. All right, guys. So I'm thinking that maybe um, 20 per minute to start out with for the uh, processing units is kind of a, kind of a high number. Maybe I'm maybe I should go for like more like 10, you know, <laughs> instead of like 20 to start out with. So we're gonna go with 10, which is actually a lot more manageable. So. First thing we need to do is handle the copper cable production, which is actually going to take about uh, 13 or so assemblers to, to do, because I need 800 of those per minute. So, let's make, uh, do we have enough of those already? No, we do not. So let's go ahead and make some 13. Let's also clear out our inventory. We should have a chest somewhere that we're using for, like, a dump chest. I don't really have a central area yet for logistics. I need to get one though, so for right now, let's go ahead and put storage chest. Oh, it's already full. Make another one of these guys. And put some stuff in there that we don't need. At least not right now. Uh, I, don't need, I don't need all this coal. I don't need this wood. Don't need any of this ore. Um. I definitely don't need these inserters or these, sorry, these um, burners, these old ass uh, machines. Everything else except for that can uh, can stay, I guess. Okay, so 13 or so copper cable pr production uh, pr producers going. So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to put them, uh, let's clear out this area down here for that. I mean, this little lake here kind of throws a wrench in how I want to set this up, but we, we should still be able to do it. As a matter of fact, I'll put them over here. I mean, it's, it, it might get in the way of this lava, which I'm going to use for the metallurgy, but worst case scenario is I can find some other source of lava. All right. So, 13. Uh, let's see. Where'd they go? Right here. Okay. Let's do it. So, the copper's going to come in from right here, and I'm thinking that we're going to do it sort of like this. Uh... Sort of like build away from the wall so I know how much room I have left because I don't want to build towards the wall because I don't want to end up with like a space that could have had something in it but then it's just off in terms of how wide it is to fit something in there. It might not make sense but basically I don't want to build towards the wall and then miscalculate and build it to where nothing can fit in this little gap that's left over. So I guess right here could be good. Ooh, that's gonna be. Oh, that fits there. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> but will it? Will a? Uh, will this fit there? No, it won't. Hmm. And neither will an inserter. Will it? Nope. Dang it. Will this fit around? It will fit around. So I can put this over here then, right? No, I can't. So we gotta move it up. Make sure I have enough room for everything. Let's put like, all right, so th that could work, right? Let me put like, starting right here. Barely. Move this light to the inside. All right, and you guys are all gonna be doing copper cables. Okay, and the. Copper plates are going to come up. Well, now I'm worried about being able to access this little lava pool here. Jeez, Louise. Um, hmm. How big is the lava tank or lava pump again? About the same size as a regular pump jack, right? Do I have one of those only I can use to size this thing with? I do not. I just don't want to block that off, you know? So let's do, can I do this? Can I move, this is gonna break everything, I know. Can I do that? 
and it fits you right here, just barely. Kind of throws a wrench in the whole defenses thing, but I'm hoping, hoping that they all attack this area here, which means they'll go, they won't attack this corner directly. If they do, then I'll just have to um, fortify this corner here with more laser turrets. But it's going to work like this. Output's going to go right here. Input's going to go right here. Actually, I can put the input. I'll do it like this. Yeah. Input will go right here. It'll come in like a corner like that. And to get it from here, I mean, do I need copper for anything else? Let's see. I mean, usually I think I think I only need copper cables, right? Yeah, I only, I only need copper cables for this, so I can actually do it like this. And if I'm wrong, I can fix it later. I can come from just right down here and just turn like that. So, whoops. Do one of these guys. Um, it's not exactly lined up, so we'll fix that with some splitters. Uh, right there should be good. I'm already getting attacked down here, but there's more than enough defenses over here to support that. And he's repairing the wall there, so we should be good. Whoops. There we go. And, yeah, it's broken because I didn't swap the direction yet. Swap the direction of all these. Conveyor belts, and now we should be good. Okay, so. 13... Uh, assemblers for copper cable. Uh, 13 is an odd number, so I'm not going to be able to equally distribute the copper cables on the line. But I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to actually equally distribute the copper cables on the line because I might need to reuse this line for something else other than copper cables. So the next step would be getting the... Well, we can actually we can set up the inserters now. The input inserters are going to be fast inserters, I'm thinking, because if I come over here to this little calculator over here and I do regular inserters, yep, I need a lot more. So we're going to do fast inserters. I don't have any of those on me, so we're going to have to make them from scratch. So 13, at least. And leaving space in between each one for a power pole. Whoops. Okay, and then the export is also going to be fast. So I need 12 more. Okay. Next step would be to get the regular advanced circuits. Oh, sorry, regular circuits. I'm sorry. I'm going to need about... How many did I decide? I think I set it on four. I need four of those. Because... Level 1 of something machine has a max speed of 60, and if I use fast inserters, then the input speed is not a problem. So the only problem is the speed of the assembler, which is 60, so I need 240 per minute divided by 60 is 4. So, let's make 4 of these guys. Well, 5, because I'm going to need more anyway. And then I'm going to set this up sort of like... Uh, Because if I look at the recipe, even though we all already know it, it takes iron plates as well. So I might want to bring some iron plates down here and join this line here somehow. Sort of come around under this line, come back over and join this line for iron. This is going to be a weird build because it's lake right here. All right. Uh, I don't know if I want to put them right next to each other. I don't know if I want to put them right next to each other, though. So, um, let's leave. Ah, uh, we're not. Well, why not? Let's go for it. You guys are all making regular circuits. Okay, so now I just need iron plates. Now here's the next thing we got to worry about is I can't export, like if this was vanilla, I wouldn't be able to export the uh, circuits on a line going right here, because I don't even think, well, can, can I put a line here? No, I can't, see? Well, I could if I go, I mean, that could work kind of. I mean, I could go like this in here, or right, right to right here, and then go underground, and then come back up right here, and then start again from right here, and then 
use a long-handed inserter to export from here to here and one from here to here. That'd be one way to do it, I guess. Which is probably the way I'll have to do it anyway, so... Yeah, but uh, we are reaching the wrapping up point. This is quite a... I, don't, I wouldn't say a big build, but it is a build that's going to require a little bit of uh, pushing and shoving and a little bit of elbow grease, if you will. So, uh, yeah, we will continue this next time. Uh, my name's Oni. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.